To help us sum it all up, I spoke earlier with renowned investor Jim Rogers. I asked him if U.S. lawmakers should be concerned that three credit rating agencies now are warning about the debt. Here was his response. What are the rating agencies doing? America's already bankrupt. The idea that they're still saying it's a triple-A credit and they may lower it is just absurd. These rating agencies have been wrong about nearly everything for the past 10 or 15 years. Don't pay any attention to them. The U.S. is in terrible trouble. Congressmen should be worried about that, not what the rating agencies are saying. So what, what should U.S. Congress do about the debt ceiling? Should they raise it or should they just not worry too much about defaulting? They should cut spending dramatically. They should take an axe, no, a chainsaw. They should take a chainsaw and cut spending. America's going down the tubes. We're the largest debtor nation in the history of the world, Lauren. This is a very serious thing that's going on around us, and we're just watching ourselves sink into the sea. Now, one thing I want to ask, you know, you, you say cut spending, and this is something we see lawmakers going back and forth about where to cut, and uh, we see Medicare being on the chopping block. This poll that I just saw that I think is pretty interesting shows that 60% of Americans blame the national debt on the war that the United States is in in Iraq and Afghanistan is, and not as much on domestic spending and on tax cuts. I want to know what you think needs to be cut. Do you think that, that the U.S. needs to take the ax to defense spending big time? Of course we do. We, Lauren, we have troops in a, over 125 countries around the world. They're not doing us any good. They're just making enemies all over the world. We should cut defense spending with a chainsaw, too. But we, that's not going to do enough, Lauren. We definitely have to cut dis defense spending, but we've got to cut everything. I mean, this cannot go on much longer. What, what will happen if the U.S. Uh, government officials, if Congress doesn't get it together to come to agreement on cutting down the debt? And raising the debt ceiling? Well, well, sooner or later, and probably sooner within the next couple of years, you're going to see people just stop buying U.S. government bonds. They're going to stop lending money to the United States. You're going to see interest rates go a lot higher. You're going to see turmoil in the currency markets. You're going to see turmoil in all financial markets and therefore in all real markets. You know, shops, companies, factories, everything are going to be affected. What about near term? You know, China is something that you know quite a lot about, and they're saying that the U.S. is playing with fire uh, if it defaults on its debts. China holds, obviously, a huge amount of U.S. treasuries. They're the U.S.'s largest foreign creditor. They want assurance that they're in safe hands. Does the U.S. owe that to China? Lauren, wouldn't you if you were the <laughs> largest creditor? I mean, if it was your brother-in-law, if it was whoever it was, if it's your sister, your mother, you would want assurances too. I would too. I wouldn't lend any money to the United States government, and I'm an American citizen. Of course not. I mean, America's in serious trouble. Other people are starting to catch on, Lauren. It's not just you, me, and the, and the rating agencies. Other people are catching on too. China, Russia, India, Brazil, everybody's saying, hey, what's wrong with you people? You've got to to shape up. And we do. Do you think that these countries will actually stop buying U.S. debt? Yes, eventually. They're already starting to cut back. As you probably know, the Chinese and the Koreans and some other countries are, are lending less to the U.S. now than they did before. And eventually they'll just stop flat out. Now, one of the things that uh, is a real issue and a sticking point also between countries like China and the United States has been the U.S.'s policy, the Federal Reserve's policy, I should really say, of quantitative easing. They had the second round of bond buybacks, which is now scheduled to end at the end of this month. Ben Bernanke spoke earlier this week, made it sound like there wouldn't be another quantitative easing program. I want to know what you think is going to happen and also what will be the effects if there isn't more quantitative easing on the financial system globally. Lauren, yes, they will stop QE2 because they've said it so many times, they have to. But then when things start getting worse again, you're going to see them come back with QE3. They may not call it that. They may disguise it. They may call it cupcakes. Who knows what they'll call it, but it's coming back. So keep your eyes out for cupcakes. That was renowned investor Jim Rogers.